Hello students, welcome back to our course Environmental Modeling and Simulation. In today's lecture, we are going to use MATLAB to make face portrait and to solve a very simple 2D model. When we just made our foray into 2D models, we took the example of friends and we tried to model relationships between friends. This was before we modeled competition, predation and cooperation using lotka volterra models as our basis. So we are going to go back to our simple 2D models, uh, one where we don't have to find the Jacobian, very quickly get the characteristic equation or the matrix. And then what we are going to do is we are going to take the example today, revisit the empirical graphical approach, and then try to see how we can do the same thing on MATLAB. In the next practical class, I will walk you through how to use R to make face portrait for a 2D model, the same system. And then we'll also get into uh, 2D models that require you to first find the Jacobian because they are nonlinear. All right, so the system we are going to look at today is very simple and it's actually straight from your textbook. So in the textbook, we have a system that goes dr by dt and dj by dt are equal to ar plus bj a j plus b r. So in this textbook question, the important part is that the stand of r towards j and the factors that impact the stand of j towards r are exactly the same. The parameter here before r is a, the parameter here for the j's equation is also a before j. Now in this system when we try to do this graphically, First step was to find the characteristic equation, which when we write in the matrix form looks like this. Now if you remember, our characteristic equation will be given by So I can now use this to find the eigenvalues so these are my eigenvalues now depending upon the relative values of a and b lambda might be positive or negative. So this was the approach where we actually find the eigenvalues and then we will proceed to find the eigenvectors. There is also a simpler approach that we studied which was to find the tau and delta values from your matrix and then use the diagram that we have been consulting many times during the course to understand the behavior of the system. Now notice here it is quite possible that a minus b and a plus b are both positive in which case this would be an unstable node. It is also possible that a plus b and a minus b have contrary signs. So maybe a plus b is negative or positive and a minus b has the opposite sign. So in that case we are dealing with the saddle node. Now if we take the tau and delta approach, this is slightly easier because we do not have to do the calculations. We go back and look at this matrix that we have here and we know that tau which is the trace of this matrix given by the summation of these two is 2a which is the determinant of this matrix is given by a square minus b square. So this is a textbook question as I mentioned. Now we can look at the tau and delta values and we can understand the kind of uh, behavior to expect around the fixed point. Now in the textbook question, it is given that A and B are both positive, which means tau is definitely positive. Now delta will be positive. For delta to be positive, A square has to be bigger than B square. For delta to be negative, A square less than B square. Okay, so tau is definitely positive. So if we go back to our diagram, so we have tau for our diagram, we have tau on the y axis, we have delta on the x axis and this is tau square minus 4 delta, this particular curve. In the first quadrant, we are dealing with unstable situations. If tau square minus 4 delta is greater than 0 in the first quadrant, we have unstable nodes. 
If tau square minus 4 delta is less than 0, we have unstable spirals. In the fourth quadrant, where tau square minus 4 delta curve is, if tau square minus 4 delta lies here between the curve and the x-axis, we have stable spiral. And we have, and if not, then we have un, uh, we have stable nodes. In the second quadrant and in the third quadrant, we are dealing with the situation where we have shadow. Between the first and the fourth quadrant, there is x-axis. If our tau is zero and our delta is positive, then we are dealing with a situation that we have center. Okay. So, this is our graph that we have consulted multiple times during this course and let us quickly consult it. We know the value of tau is 2a. In the question, it is given that a is positive, which means tau is always positive. So, we are dealing with either the first quadrant or the second quadrant. Delta is a square minus b square. Delta can be positive, delta can be negative. So, let us say delta is negative. Then we are dealing with second quadrant. We are dealing with the saddle. So, delta being negative is when a square is less than b square, given that both are positive. Remember what I said, if a square is less than b square, both are positive means a is less than b. So, 1 alpha, which is, let us say alpha 1 is a minus b and alpha 2 is a plus b, then this is going to be less than 0, this is going to be greater than 0. So, we are dealing with the saddle. However, if delta is positive, now we are in the first quadrant. So, we are either dealing with an unstable node or with an unstable spiral. So, for that you have to find out the value of tau square minus 4 delta. Tau is 2a. Four is positive, b square is always going to be positive because b is a real number, b is positive too. So, tau square minus 4 delta in this instance is going to be greater than 0. So, we are dealing with unstable node. So, here in this situation we have unstable node and in this situation we have a saddle. So, this was our the, the approach that we have learned so far. How are we going to get similar understanding using MATLAB. Now, the important point is in MATLAB graphically, if we can draw the face portrait, if we can draw the slope field, we can see how the flow lines are moving around the fixed points. And once we know that, we can see the flow lines and we can say, hey, this is behaving like a saddle or hey, this is behaving like a unstable node. Now, what I am going to do is, I am going to take this model and I am going to run it on MATLAB. I am going to build it on MATLAB. I am going to show you how to write simple commands, simple models. And I am going to assume some value of a and b. Now, when I am not using MATLAB, and I am, remember I said in one of the previous lectures that we can use real life information to estimate the value of our parameters, which in this case is a and b. For example, a could be 2 and b could be 3 or vice versa. However, when we do not know the values and we are just using the graphical approach that we have studied so far in this course, to understand how the system is working, we get to see the other possibilities too. If I know A is equal to 2, B is equal to 3 in this particular situation, my MATLAB will show me that my fixed point is acting like a saddle. But I do not know that there is also a possibility if A changes enough that instead of an, a saddle point, I might have an, an unstable fixed point. When I do not know the values of A and B and I am using my empirical approach, I am using my basic graphical approach, I can see the whole picture even when I do not know the values of the parameters. Now, this is not always possible. This is a very simple model and the tau and delta values are very obvious and I know A and B are positive. So, it is very easy for me to say, oh, this situation can have both an unstable node or a sudden node depending on the relative values of A and B. A MATLAB requires me to have a better understanding of what my parameters are the range I am working in, what the initial point is and we shall see that very soon. So, what I am going to do is in MATLAB, I am going to take two situations. In one situation, I am going to let A be less than B. In another situation, I am going to make A greater than B, more than B and I am going to show you how 
मैटलैब विल एक्चुअली शो यू दैट है इन दिस केस इट्स अनस्टेबल नोट इन दिस केस इट्स अ सेटल नोट ऑल राइट सो लेट्स स्टार्ट मैट लैब सिंस दिस इज नॉट अर फर्स्ट प्रैक्टिकल यू ऑलरेडी मस्ट बी अवेयर ऑफ द सिंटैक्स दैट इज टिपिकली यूज इन मैट लैब नाउ सिंस आई डोंट अज्यूम पीपल टू बी वेरी वेल वर्स विद मैट लैब एंड स्टार्ट दिस कोर्स I'm going to go through this code that I have written to write a very simple face portrait for this system, and here you can see the value of a is three and the value of b is two. So the first thing that I'm doing here is I'm telling MATLAB that I want to plot a figure. But remember, this is a model that I wrote knowing that I know already how to tell MATLAB to solve my model. If you remember in the previous practical class, I told you how to write a simple ODE forty-five situation where you tell ODE. 45 the solver the ode solver where your ode is what your ode is so this can be a different file in this case the model is in the same file and then i tell it the time interval for which i want to run the model and then i tell um the initial conditions the starting conditions that i'm giving the model so this is the basic format of ode 45 that was discussed before if you do not want to see the uh, detailed processes that MATLAB is making it every step. Make sure you remember to put a semicolon at the end. And then once the model has been solved, now notice here I have given this information to the MATLAB that I wanted to run for from this time to this time minus ten to ten, with at zero point one interval. So if you remember this basic syntax for MATLAB to show the range, this is basically saying that t varies from minus ten to ten at zero point one interval again. Put a semicolon if you don't want to see detailed steps. Okay, now let's walk through this model. The first line is saying that I want to draw a diagram, a figure, and then mesh grid. What I'm doing with mesh grid is I'm saying that my figure has two axes, x and y. X varies from minus ten to ten, and I want you to make a grid at one unit interval. Y varies again from minus to ten, minus ten to ten. and i want the grid to be at one unit interval i think what i'll do is i will write comments here to be more clear about what these commands do you can have multiple lines in your comment so always recommended to be very clear where your comments are so i'm putting this in on the left side so the comments do not interfere with the actual code do not appear to interfere now here what i'm writing is the x1 represents basically the rate for dx by dt for x so this is basically fx and there are different ways of writing you don't have to write x1 you can actually write dx by dt i think in the previous practical lecture we actually wrote dx by dt and then here we have gx dy by dt quiver is very important when you're trying to plot face portrait so what quiver is doing is i'm asking quiver that hey for x and y as you compute the values of x and y using ode 45 solver i want you to plot x and y and for every x and y i want you to plot the slope lines which is x1 and x2 remember so i want slope lines for x and y so quiver takes in input in different formats and you can always look for help on matlab in this particular situation i'm using quiver informing matlab that i want for each particular given x and y which the information that will come from solving this particular model using ode 
I want you to plot the slope, which is x1 and y1. Remember, when you use OD45, for given values of time, for you will get dx y dt, right? Obviously, you will have x and y that are varying, and you are getting dx by dt and dy by dt, which is x1 and y1 here. And then using all these four together, you can make quiver. If you look at the flow lines, what are the flow lines? Flow line is basically in your phase space where you have two variables that you're plotting for a 2D model. At any given x and y, you want to know the direction of the flow. And the direction of flow is a vector with x1 being the velocity in x-axis and y1 being the velocity in y-axis. So when you're plotting x1, y1, the vector will have dx by dt or x1 as its x component and y1 as its y component, which is what quiver is doing. So quiver is quintessential when you're plotting face portraits. In the next lectures, when we make more face diagrams and even do sensitivity analyses, you will see that we'll use quiver a lot. Okay, these are adding information to the plot, that the figure that we are going to make. Now, with the, once we make the figure, MATLAB will give you options to include or edit the X label, the Y label, the title, the limits manually. You can also write this in your codes. Let's say, for example, you're making face portraits for four different situations or four different models. You can use the same code by just changing the model that you're referring to. In that case, if you know the format that works for you, you can just write the format here in the code itself and you don't need to change anything in the post-processing of the figure that will be made. So I'll just write comments here informing you what each line of the code is doing here, how it is changing the way your figure looks. So here I'm writing down table for x axis. And it does not have to be x, it, it's actually the name of the parameter on x axis. So for example, um, if we are sticking with R and J that's there in the textbook, R and J notations, then we can have R and J instead of X and Y. Okay, here title face portrait. This is within the quotation marks, which is important. Now, x lim and y lim, this notation is actually very similar to notation that we use in R. x lim and y lim is defining the range of x axes. So here x lim, we have round bracket and within the square bracket, we have minus 10 to 10. What this is doing is it is defining that the x axis ranges from minus 10 to 10. Similarly, y lim is defining the range of y axis. Grid is doing a very simple job, it is sid. The right, uh, the grid is on. So basically it is saying that keep the grid on, show the grid. Now grid is something that we already, I talked about the mesh grid. So we already know the range of the grid and after what interval we will see a grid line. You don't always have to keep the grid on, but hold on. Now hold on is a very important command. What it does is does MATLAB that keep plotting, keep plotting the graphs below. So do not, now this is, I've already said that, hey, this is your graph, plot this graph, right? Started with figure, make the mesh grid. But now I'm telling MATLAB there is more to plot within the same figure. I'm defining the time range, the T range, and now this, what I'm plotting here is basically eigenvector. I have already solved this question in the class before, and I know that eigenvector, this is the first eigenvector. The first eigenvector is V1 by V2, 
is equal to 1 by 1. Then here I am plotting the second eigenvector. which is v1 by v2 is equal to 1 by minus 1. Another important thing to note is r is red, it is the color. If I put k here, it will draw the eigenvectors in k. Now, how do I know eigenvectors? I, there are different ways of, you can even do it uh, on MATLAB. Since this is a very simple model, I calculated eigenvalues like I showed you and then found eigenvectors. And then here is me asking the or the coder asking MATLAB to solve the equation and give a result of t y y, the range, the initial point and then I also want to plot the model itself. For the given starting values. Now let us run this model. All right, let us take a closer look at the figure that we have generated here. Okay, so notice I said once the figure is made, the MATLAB will give you options to change things, you know, you can change the legend, you can add or remove the legend, you can change the Y label, the X label, the title, the grid, you can remove the grid, I want the grid to stay, so I am not going to remove it, you can have Y grid and the X grid, okay, and then you have other options too, you can do data fitting, you can do some statistical, you can do some statistical analyses on MATLAB. MATLAB is very, very versatile. All right, let us look at our face portrait and let us see what it is trying to tell us. So, clearly this is a very simple system where the fixed points are 0, 0, there is only one fixed point. So, 3x plus 2y, 2x plus 3y both will be 0 only, simultaneously 0 only when x and y are 0, which is also what MATLAB is saying, it is agreeing that there is one fixed point which is 0, 0, things are not moving here. As you move away from this fixed point, notice the size of the arrows becomes bigger. The, the direction of the arrow is telling you the direction of the flow and the size of the arrow is trying to give you an information on the magnitude of the flow, the velocity of the flow. Okay, notice around the fixed point, there is the, the arrows become really small, so you know that the flow is very non-existent, very small. As you move away, the flow increases. Now, another thing to notice is that look at the direction of the flow. Clearly, the eigenvector here, which is 1, 1, the movement is away from the eigenvector in both directions. If you look at the eigenvector minus 1, 1, again, the flow is away. So, if we are here, the flow is towards upper left corner. If we are here, the flow is towards the bottom right corner. So, in this situation, where A is bigger than B, we are dealing with the unstable mode, unstable fixed point. Now, let us change our model here and make A smaller than B. And let us rerun this. Now we get figure 2, a new figure and notice just by changing the parameters, the behavior of flow lines around the fixed point 0, 0 has changed, has varied. What you notice is that in the direction of the first eigenvector 1, 1, the flow is again moving away from the fixed point, so it, the behavior along the second vector seems very similar to what we saw in the first situation where the movement is away from the fixed point. But in the case of the second eigenvector minus 1 to 1, the flow is towards the fixed point. The tiny arrows are pointing towards 0, 0. The flow is moving towards. So now we are dealing with the saddle mode. 
And as we had done multiple times in our class, look how the flow lines are moving. They're coming closer to the fixed point and then they're moving away from the fixed point. Same here, they're coming closer to the fixed point and then moving away, coming closer, moving away, coming closer, moving away. These resemble the saddle of the horseback that is put on the horseback. So that's why then this particular system is known as saddle point. Okay, students, so this was how to draw face portrait for 2D systems in MATLAB. This code will be available to you for experimenting. Try to change the values, try to change the model, and try to even write a model for logistic equation and lotka Volterra models that we studied in the course. In the next lecture, I'll talk more in detail about how to use MATLAB and R, both of them, to make face portraits for models where you need to first find the Jacobian matrix and then plot. Now, this is 2D system. How will you make a face portrait for 1D system? For 1D system, the big difference is while the y-axis will carry the velocity of the change of uh, velocity of the only variable x, the x-axis will actually have the value of x. So we will have x on the x-axis and dx by dt or fx or x1 on the y-axis. So what we are plotting here changes. Now here the output of the model that was solved by OD45 is in the format of TYY. T is the time, YY is the value. We'll give you two columns. And one column will have the X values and the other column will have Y values. So when you're plotting the first column, you're basically plotting the X values. When we're plotting the second column, we're plotting the Y values. When we use OD45 to run 1D systems, 1D models, we only get one column which corresponds to the x values. So we have to just have one additional step for plotting 1D systems, face portraits for 1D systems, and we'll take a closer look at that in the next lecture. Now, um, before we move on, we can experiment with the values of A and B and see how that changes our face portrait. So let me label here. This is when A was bigger than B. And this is when A is less than B. Now we can look at other situations. We can play around more. And we can see how the slope lines vary. Since this is a textbook equation, we have different scenarios in the textbook. And this is actually a question at the end of chapter 5, these are questions 5.3. So we'll vary the values of A and B and look at different scenarios. So the first scenario we're looking at is 5.3.2, where dx by dt is equal to y. And dy by dt is equal to minus r minus x plus y plus j. So let's run this. So here, notice how the behavior is. It seems that the flow lines are moving in a circular path around the fixed point. So let me relabel this. This is corresponding to 5.3.2. So here, if you're using MATLAB, you can, even without solving, you can very quickly infer that the fixed point has circular movement around itself. Now here, it looks to me uh, based on what we have plotted so far, it looks to me like it's an outward moving spiral. But again, if you make a bigger plot, we might be able to see it's a center, but it looks like outward moving spiral to me. Now let's change the model again, corresponding to 5.3. So you can actually use this particular face portrait to answer the questions that go with the question 5.3.2 in your textbook. For example, uh, characterize the relationship styles of R and J, classify the fixed point at the origin, what does it imply? How are you assuming x and y will change as t tends to infinity? We see x and y are appearing to go towards infinity as t tends to infinity. Now, what kind of infinity? If let's say our starting point is here, then 
here where now you can see the value of x and y, right? x is 6 and y is plus 3. It seems that after sufficient time, x and y will move towards negative infinity. However, here, if you are starting here, minus 2 minus 8, it seems that x is going towards plus infinity and y is also going towards plus infinity. So really the location where we are will affect the fate of x and y. Okay. Now let us look at 5.3.3 where x and y are only responding to each other. So let us say 2 into y and dy by dt is plus 1 into y. Let us run this system. And let us relabel it. Okay, I need to clarify something for figure 3 and for figure 4. Our eigenvectors will change, so I want to stop plotting them. So I am going to put the comment sign in front of them and then rerun this. So this is for 5.3.3, fixed point is still 0, 0. Look at the flow lines, look how they are moving. Tells you a lot about how R and how X and Y are behaving. So students, this particular model will be available to you along this lecture. So please uh, play around, try to solve all the questions. So I will just write my advice here, which is solve section 5.3 at the end of chapter 5 of the prescribed textbook using these codes. So I definitely want you to do it graphically that we learned in the class and I also want you to try MATLAB and see if what you are looking at via graphical approach matches what MATLAB tells you. Alright students, so this was all for today's class where we explored 2D system in MATLAB. In the next lecture, we will look at more examples of 2D systems in MATLAB, R and also do some sensitivity analysis. See you in the next lecture.